So to find slope from two points, we are always going to use the slope formula. So what is the slope formula? The slope formula is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, if there's any formula you need to know and memorize and learn, it is this formula. I encourage you to write this on your bathroom mirror, and every day you brush your teeth, you should read this formula so you know it. So when we do slope from two points, the first order pair will always be our x1, y1. The second order pair, oops, that's going to be a 1, not 2. The second order pair will always be our x2, y2. So we have an example here. It says find the slope between negative 3, 4, and 8, 2. So you guys know that slope is rise over run, change in dependent over change in independent, as well as a change in y over change in x. We are going to use the slope formula to find this change in the y and the change in the x. So we're going to write our example, so negative 3, 4, and 8, 2, in the parentheses underneath x1, y1, and x2, y2. So I'm going to let x1 be negative 3, and I'm going to let y1 is going to be 4. Okay? So here is y1, and here is x1. Okay? Now x2 is going to be 8, and y2 is going to be 2. So all we're doing is labeling our points. So we have the same points as before, and we have x1, y1, x2, y2. We've just labeled our points. So looking at the formula, and the slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, we are going to plug in y2 and y1 on top. So we go back and look at our, our, we look at our labeled points, y2 was 2. So we put a 2. Minus y1 was 4. So I put a 4. Over x2 minus x1. x2 was 8. x1 was negative 3. So I have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now we need to simplify this. So it's subtraction, so we're going to use keep, change, switch. So we keep the first number, we change the minus to a plus, and we change the sign of the second number. Oops, let me fix that real quick. Change the sign of the second number. So it was a negative, we made that a negative four. Okay, so we did keep, change, switch, change that to a plus. All right, on the bottom, we're going to do keep, change, switch. So we keep the 8, we change the minus to a plus, and we change negative 3 to positive 3. And now we're going to simplify this. So 2 plus negative 4, they're different signs, so we subtract and we get 2, and we keep the sign of the boss. There's more negative, so the boss here is negative. On the bottom, we have 8 plus 3. 8 plus 3 is pretty easy. 8 plus 3 is just going to be 11. So our slope is negative 2 over 11. So this is a negative slope, which means it falls from left to right, goes down, and our rise is down 2, and our run is 11. So negative 2 over 11. So that is how we use the slope formula. Now, a couple of things I want to talk to you about with the slope formula, and we're going to do a couple more practice problems. So, oops, let me clear all this. Uh, so, a couple of things when we do these problems. If we do this problem, we do the equation, and we end up with zero on top, that means the slope is zero. If zero is on the bottom, that means our slope is going to be undefined. OK, 
okay? A couple other things we need to remember is that we never, ever, ever are going to write slope as a mixed number. We're never going to write it as a mixed number. We're always going to leave it as an improper fraction. Also, we always reduce or simplify as much as possible, okay? So I'm going to work these six problems out so you have a couple more examples to see. And what I was just doing is maybe pause the video, you try number one, and then you check your answer with my answer. And then watch how I do number one. If you got it wrong, watch the explanation, and then pause it again and try number two. So number one, I'm going to label my ordered pairs. So I'm going to label them x1 and x2 is right here, and then y1 and y2. Okay. And I, I always encourage writing your slope formula in the beginning so you really learn it. So we have m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So for y2, we're going to put in 5. For y1, we're going to put in 7. For x2, we're going to put in 9. And for x1, we're going to put in 3. Now we're going to simplify this. So on the top, we do keep, change, switch. So 5 plus negative 7, we subtract, and we keep the sign of a larger number. It'll take the sign of the boss. So it's going to be a negative 2. On the bottom, I really don't need to do keep, change, switch, because we all know that 9 minus 3 is 6. So we get negative 2 over 6, and I cannot leave this as my answer because this will simplify to negative 1 third. We can reduce both of those by 2, and we get negative 1 third. So the slope for this line is negative 1 third. Okay? All right, number 2. Number 2, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to label x1, y1. And then x2, y2. All right. And then I always like to write the slope formula just so I know it. So we have m equals y2 minus y1 all divided by x2 minus x1. And then we're going to plug in, okay? So for y2, I'm going to plug in 8. For y1, I'm going to plug in 2. For x2, I'm going to plug in 7. And for x1, I'm going to plug in 7. Now, some of you guys are probably noticing right here, you're like, hey, Miss Hagen, this looks a little bit different. And that's okay, because we're going to talk about that. Okay? So we simplify this. We don't have to do keep, change, switch with this one. We can just do 8 minus 2 is 6, and 7 minus 7 is 0. So I have 0 on the bottom of this problem. In math, I am never allowed to have 0 on the bottom of a fraction. That is a big no-no. So what I need to do with this problem is I need to simplify it. And it's not going to be zero. In fact, if you put this in your calculator, if you put 6 divided by 0 in your calculator, it is going to tell you error because it is an error. It's because this is called an undefined slope. It's an undefined slope. And your answer is not 6 over 0. Your answer is undefined. This is what I would need to see on your paper if you worked it out or on your test, okay? And the slope of this line, if it's undefined, we know that this is a vertical line. It's a straight up and down vertical line. All right, so that's number two. Let's try number three. Let's try number three. 
Um, and I'm going to forego the colors for this one because I think we've got it now. So we have x1, y1, x2, y2. So we do m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So for y2, we're going to plug in 6. For y1, we're going to plug in 4. For x2, we're going to plug in... Th ah, nope, Miss Hagen just made a mistake. X, y1 is not 4. I just put in x1. Whoops. Hold on. Y, maybe I should be doing the colors. Y1 is 2, so 6 minus 2. And then x2 is 4 minus x1 is 0. Okay, um, and let me make a little note here. One thing I notice that students miss a lot is that they mix up the X and the Y's, okay? So they mix up the X and the Y's and they get, they flip them, okay? So we don't wanna do that. We don't wanna flip them. We want to make sure Y's always go on top and X's always go on the bottom, all right? Otherwise you're gonna be getting every single one wrong. The Y's go on top and the X's go on the bottom. All right, so we need to simplify this. So six minus two is four, and four minus zero is four. So we get four over four, which is one. So the slope of this line is M equals one. Very good. All right, I feel like you guys are getting this. All right, let's try number four. So number four, we're gonna do the same thing. And I'm gonna go back to the colors because I made a mistake and I wanna make sure we got this. So we have X1, X2 is over here. And these are all ordered pairs, our X's and our Y's. And we've got Y1 and Y2. And I'm gonna write my slope of formula, M equals, I'm gonna put my little, fill out my little blanks so it's easier that way. So M equals, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So then we're going to plug in what we know. We're going to plug in, I erased all of it. <laughs> Oops. We're going to plug in for the blue, we're going to plug in 5 minus 5 because y2 is 5 and here y1 is also 5. Okay, and then x2 is 9, and x1 is negative 2. So on the top, um, 5 minus 5, we can do that pretty easily. 5 minus 5 is just 0, okay? On the bottom, though, we're going to have to do some keep change switch. So we keep the 9, we change the minus to a plus, and we change negative 2 to positive 2. So on the bottom of this equation, I'm going to end up with 9 plus 2, which is 11. So I've got 0 over 11. Well, if you put 0 over 11 in your calculator, it is going to give you 0. So the slope of this line is 0. That means this is a horizontal line. Without even looking at a graph, I can tell that this line is horizontal just by looking at its slope. So that is how we find the slope when it's zero on top. So remember, if zero is on top, the slope is zero. If zero is on bottom, the slope is undefined. All right, number five, we have x1, y1, x2, y2. So we do m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, so y2 is negative four. y1 is two x2 is 8, and x1 is 5. So on the top, I'm going to do keep, change, switch. Negative 4 and negative 2 is negative 6. On the bottom, I'm just going to do 8 minus 3 is, or 5 is 3. So I have negative 6 over 3, so that simplifies, and my slope is negative 2. So my slope here is negative 2. And the last problem, I have x1, y1, x2, y2, and same thing, I like to write that formula every time, so I learn, the more you write it, guys, the more you memorize it. You're memorizing it without even doing any work. So m equals y2 minus y1 
over x2 minus x1. So I plug in 5 for y2 minus negative 5 for y1, 4 for x2 minus negative 2 for x1. I'm going to do keep, change, change, and keep, change, change, or keep, change, switch. Now it's just an addition problem. I get 10 over 8. So 10 over 8, is, they're both divisible by 2. It's going to reduce to 5 over 4. Now, listen, you are not going to make that a mixed number. You're going to leave this an improper fraction. We never, ever make it a mixed number, okay? Because that 5 is our rise and that 4 is our run. It's telling us our directions, how, how far up and how far over to go. So we don't want to lose that rise and the run. If you make it a mixed number, you'll lose that. So that was just a quick review on how to on how to find slope from two points. Please know you have to learn the slope formula. I'm gonna go ahead and just tell you guys you're gonna need it for the rest of this school year. And when you go to ninth grade next year in algebra one, it's like one of the number one things you have to know. And I taught algebra one for four years, so I know what I'm talking about. Okay. So you guys are gonna do great. If you have any questions, let me know. I hope you'll have a wonderful day today.